time's up and once again we're gonna be the last ones back on the bus <laughs> We're Sarah and Marek, and we've been traveling on a tight budget since October 2020. Budget travel has its highs and lows, but we're so happy to be exploring the world, experiencing delicious foods, different and interesting cultures, and seeing some incredibly beautiful places. Subscribe and join our adventures. Here we go. Today we are partnering with Gorgeous Tours Cappadocia and we are coming on the Red Line Tour. Now if you don't know what the Red Line Tour is, don't worry, we'll tell you all about that during the day. Our first stop for the day is this crazy looking ancient castle. Now our tour guide told us that people actually used to live inside this castle and you can see that by all the holes and windows and doors and all that kind of thing that have been carved into the rock formation and they lived there until recently like 1960s 1970s when the government then built housing for them in the nearby towns and all the people moved out That was such good teamwork. I was busy flying the drone, Sarah was doing all the b-roll and the talking. That's what it's going to be like for most of the day. On these tours, you only stop at a place for a few minutes, but when you're not making a video, it's definitely more than more enough than time. Enough. But it's just a little bit tricky for us. So that's how it's going to be during the day, but it's just fun. We're operating like a very, very good team Let's at the moment. Let's do this! <laughs> Next stop is the Gorime Open Air Museum. Oh, we can just Christ in the middle, John the Baptist and Mother Mary. Oh, not allowed to film in here. It's a real shame that we can't film, but we are respecting their wishes. These are all ancient paintings and ancient structures, so we want to try our best to keep them intact. So Cappadocia actually used to be the center of Christianity in Turkey, and the Gurema Open Air Museum is actually just a collection of churches. So just in the little bit of time that we've been here, we've gone into one church, a little church below that, here's a church, here's a church, here's a church, and here's another church. And we're actually going to be going through another church just before we leave. So back in the day, and now we're talking just after the World War I, the Lorenz Agreement was signed. And one of the results of this agreement was a massive population shift from Greece and Turkey. So basically this whole population shift was determined based on the religion that you wanted to follow. If you wanted to be Christian, you moved to Greece. If you wanted to follow Islam, you moved to Turkey. So this basically meant one million Greeks that were living in Turkey moved back to Greece and half a million Turks who were living in Greece moved back to Turkey. So the massive Christian population that was living here in Cappadocia was all moved to Greece. I can't even imagine the gravity of a situation where you're moving such a massive amount of people. And apparently to this day the older generation of Greek people who come and visit Turkey or Turkish people who visit Greece still feel the effects and it's still like a fresh wound for them that massive change of lifestyle and having to move from everything that they knew a little interesting nugget of information the rocks behind me right there as you can see they've got like holes purposefully dug into them and these are for the pigeons and they are called well 
pigeonholes. So a really interesting fact is that back in the day, these pigeons, they used to use them and the eggs for the actual paintings that we unfortunately can't show you. But they used to use the white part of the egg to act as the color for the paint. And they used to use the yolk or the yellow part of it to hold the paint to the wall. So it was basically the glue. But on top of that, they used to use the poo <laughs> as a fertilizer. They used to use the pigeons as messengers and they also used to use them. So that one single animal served multiple functions for that society. It's really, really interesting. Not those, up here. <laughs> no one knows why, but this church is called the Sandal Church. really wish that we could show you guys these paintings they are honestly incredible and to think that they've lasted all this time and they just used pigeon shells pigeon eggs crazy so a bit of a fun story i was actually just trying to fly the drone <laughs> but as i was about to take off the phone restarted and i didn't know the pin code for our turkish sim so <laughs> in the process of me trying to find the pin code i eventually got to turn on the phone and just like that our time was up but on the way down we actually just ran into two fellow south africans and we had a massive chat there's always so much fun running into fellow south africans but our time here is finished and we're gonna head on out to our next spot goes by three names and the first one is Pashaba. Now if you translate the Turkish Pasha means general and Ba means vineyard. So at some point in history maybe about 50 or 60 years ago this place had a retired general running it as a vineyard and basically it was the general's vineyard and you can still find the grapevines scattered around the valley. Now the second name is Monks Valley and the reason for that is because there actually used to be monks living here at some point during time. The last name is Mushroom Valley and that pretty much speaks for itself. What do these things look like? <laughs> at all these crazy looking structures and rock formations in Cappadocia in our time here and wondering how the heck these things were formed and our tour guide just told us how. So people refer to these as fairy chimneys. Now the reason for that is back in the day, like many, many thousands of years ago, people had no idea how these chimneys were formed. And they thought it was some sort of mysterious fairy that came and sculpted these holes and changed it into these incredible structures that we can see today. But the actual reason for all of this is due to erosion. So Cappadocia is actually surrounded by three major volcanoes and many, many thousands of years ago, these volcanoes were all active, but luckily not anymore. So this place also used to be an inland sea. So due to the process of volcanic activity, the lava as well as the ash became the process of drying up the sea. That was a lot. This volcanic ash started making up layers which eventually turned into rock and due to the process of erosion with the wind and the rain it started wearing away at all these different layers of volcanic lava and ash. So through this whole process this is how these conical shapes have been formed and the reason why you can actually see caps on top of some of these cones is because those are the fresher layers of lava that's obviously harder and a whole lot more solid than the lower levels. So in time and we're talking many many years now those caps will eventually fall off and look just like the cones that you can find all over Cappadocia. So in summation, if you didn't actually catch any of it, it's basically just a process of volcanic ash and lava that has eroded over time. And interestingly enough, if we were back in the day when the level was still at the top, we would have been standing all the way up there. Time's up and once again, we're going to be the last ones back on the bus. <laughs> Our next stop is a place called Imagination Valley and there's a very good reason for that name. You drive up to this place and you sort of drive into this valley and there's crazy rock structures everywhere and then our tour guide started to point out 
shapes and objects and things that you can see in the rock structures. So the first one he pointed out was a camel. The next thing he pointed out was a hand. Another one was a penguin, Napoleon's hat, and two ducks kissing. Now, if we had come here on our own and we were looking at all these crazy looking rock structures, I highly doubt we would have seen all the things he pointed out. It's kind of one of those situations where it's like, if you tilt your head this way, and then you put your hand like this and you close this eye and close, okay, there you go, got it. Kidding. <laughs> And now it's time for the best part of the day. Lunch time and it's a buffet. It's literally my favorite word. No. I'm excited. So excited. <laughs> I haven't even started eating yet and I've spilt everywhere. Typical. <laughs> the main course was good, but have you seen the dessert? You kind of missed the table there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I don't know what everything is, so naturally, just have to test all of it. Oh, missed one. <laughs> Look at these plates, they're so full. <laughs> Getting a third one. <laughs> traditional Turkish pottery studio and I just tried my hand at making one of these pots and it is much harder than it looks. The detail on some of these items is so intricate and beautiful and one of the shop attendants was telling us that some of these items take more than six months to make because of that intricate detail. <laughs> We've just arrived at our last stop but unfortunately the rain has come for the day. So we're quickly trying to get some footage of it. <laughs> this is actually where all those Greeks that I was telling you about earlier it's from the Lazon. Lazen? The Lazen agreement. The agreement. <laughs> this is where one million Greeks used to live and they have now since immigrated back to Greece. This is where they used to stay. Crazy. I don't think we'll be out here for much longer. <laughs> Ready? Alright. <laughs> Done. Back to the bus. <laughs> And with that, our tour for today is over. But we've got one more activity tomorrow and we're honestly more excited for this than the buffet itself. So you know that it's going to be pretty great. We'll see you tomorrow. We are going on a Sunset ATV tour. Oh yeah.
as Sarah mentioned earlier, we have come on a sunset ATV tour through beautiful Cappadocia. And honestly, this landscape is just amazing. And we can't quite believe that we are able to ride ATVs through this place. Another thing that we can't quite believe either is just how many people there are. This is such a popular activity and for very good reason also. I still can't get over the incredible landscape here. It honestly feels like you're on a different planet and it's stunning. Beautiful layers of different colors in the landscape, in the rocks. It's just beautiful. I'm sure you guys are also having quite a good chuckle with us in our attire as well. <laughs> We're having no to helmets. wear helmets and these little hair nets as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's just quite fun <laughs> but we've got a five minute break now which means that we're unfortunately already halfway through our tour and we could honestly do this all day long we've just been told we're not allowed to drift anymore i guess we were pushing it a bit but still a bit of a bummer oh i can see you too Marek. more interesting and special to experience and today pretty much just speaks for itself that was so much fun so with this our time in Cappadocia is over and we have absolutely loved Cappadocia it's been our favorite part of Turkey so far Definitely. hands down this place is incredible and we've had such an amazing time here we're sad to say goodbye but it's time to head on to new and exciting adventures so if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, please do click that button and subscribe and join us on all our adventures. Like this video if you enjoyed it. It really helps our channel out a lot. And if you're interested to find out more about gorgeous tours, we'll leave all the information linked down in the description below. Our next video is something so completely different and something we are honestly so scared about. We've never done anything like this before. But We've decided to do this because we need to challenge ourselves. We need to push our boundaries and we need to experience different things. So make sure you stick around for that one to come. And I'll see you guys back this coming Tuesday. Can you tell which thumb I've been using to press the accelerator? Whoops. Oh. Boy, easy tiger. Feels like we're back in cowboy town. People are just parking their horses. Oturur, oturur. Onun yanına gitme. Beyazın yanına gitme.